Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recent release of Peppermint OS. Peppermint OS has been around for more than a decade, so it's kind of an old Linux distribution. For most of its existence, it was based on Ubuntu, but here in the last couple of releases, they are now basing off of Debian. And because Debian just released Debian 12, of course you're going to see all of these Debian-based distributions starting to release new versions based on Debian 12. So let's switch over to my desktop here. I'm going to run through a quick quick installation and take a first look at Peppermint OS inside a virtual machine. So let me go ahead and boot. I do like the splash screen. That's very nice. And we boot into our live desktop environment. Now it should be noted that Peppermint OS is an XFCE Linux distribution. And I say that because, uh, Many things have changed with Peppermint over the years. I mentioned it used to be based on Ubuntu. Now it's based on Debian. It also used to be a LXDE XFCE hybrid desktop where they'd use the LX session, but they'd use a lot of the XFCE panel and tools and things. So it was kind of a mixture of two desktop environments, LXDE and XFCE. But now they've dropped all the LXDE stuff and it's just a straight XFCE desktop environment. And I really like this welcome application. This is pretty slick here. Now one thing I don't see here in the welcome application is a button for installing Peppermint OS. So if you're gonna have the welcome application auto start, you know, before you actually get the Linux distribution installed, it'd be nice if you had an install button in the welcome application. But that's just, that's a minor gripe. Uh, I don't know how difficult it would be for them to add that, but they do have this desktop icon, install Peppermint. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it launches the Calamaris installer. So let's run through a quick installation. Uh, let me hide my head here. So we have uh, American English as the language for the installer. I'm going to click next because that's correct for me. And then it has correctly chosen the central time zone in the U.S. for me. So I'll just click next on that. Then keyboard, I'm going to be English U.S., which is already chosen. So I'm just going to click next on that. And then partitioning our drive. Do I want to erase the disk and give the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine? over to Peppermint or do I want to do some manual partitioning and that would be useful if you were going to boot alongside a, another operating system maybe dual boot alongside Windows for example but in this case in this VM I'm just going to do a race disk and let Peppermint OS have the entire virtual drive in this virtual machine now do we want to swap in a virtual machine I don't really need a swap but if I was doing this on physical hardware I would create a swap typically I do swap to file and then we also have this drop down here for our file system. By default, it's going to do extend for, but it looks like if I wanted to, I could do F2FS or XFS as well. But I'm going to stick with the tried and true extend for. I'm going to go ahead and click next and let's go ahead and create our username. I'm going to call my user DT. What is the name of this computer? So this is the computer's host name. I'm going to call it uh, peppermint dash vert. If I ever SSH into this machine, I'll know exactly which virtual machine I'm SSHing into. Now let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and repeat the strong and complicated password. Do we want to log in automatically without asking for a password? It's ticked off. I'm going to leave that ticked off. You want to have to enter a password to get into any computer and that's for privacy reasons. Nobody should be able to just come up to your computer and like open your browser and then go to your bookmarks and things like that. That could be very dangerous. Always require a password. I'm going to click next and we get our summary here and everything looks good. Time zone, location, keyboard, partition scheme. So I'm just going to click install. Now this portion of the installation typically takes about 10 minutes on my machine. So I'm going to step away, grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Peppermint OS has finished installing. And the installation of Peppermint OS has completed. That took about 10 minutes. Now, when you're done with the installation here in the Calamaris installer, you want to make sure that this checkbox here, Restart Now, is ticked on and then click Done, and it should automatically reboot the machine for you. And it looks like in this virtual machine, it will not automatically reboot because I got this splash screen that I'm assuming was the operating system trying to shut down, but it just hung here. I have been waiting for about a minute. So I'm actually going to go ahead and force the virtual machine to shut down. So I'm going to force it off. And now let me see if I can manually restart it. Yep. And it does look like the installation was successful because we have a grub menu. 
and we get to our login manager it looks like they're using lightdm for their login manager so let me enter my super secure password and we are in the xfce desktop environment before i go any further let me go ahead and launch the display program and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 click apply do we want to keep this configuration yes and now every time I launch this virtual machine, it should remember that I always want this to be 1920 by 1080. So first impressions of Peppermint OS, it's a very attractive desktop, right? I really love the themes as far as XFCE and the GTK theme, the welcome application, I like the wallpaper, right? It's an attractive kind of design, right? It's kind of a minimal distribution. You can see their logo, less is more, right? Being XFCE, kind of a minimal desktop environment, right? It's not trying to be too wow and over the top, but it is a rather attractive distribution now in the welcome application I do love the look and feel of this thing let me click on some stuff so select packages and web browsers so let's click on that and we get a second window here where we can install things like Atrol, which is your document viewer PDF viewer parole which is a media player GUFW which is the graphical version of UFW which is the firewall snap package program flat pack package program okay well, those are probably some of the more interesting things to actually enable. So let's see if we can get snaps enabled. So let me enter my sudo password. And it is installing a few things here. Hopefully after that we should be in able to install snap packages. And now let's do the same for flat packs. And once again, enter the sudo password. And it's going to install, I'm assuming, flat pack and its dependencies. Suggested web browsers. We have Firefox, Conqueror, Epiphany, Tor Browser, Cute Browser, Chromium, and Falcon. Does it not ship a browser by default? It does not. That is interesting. So uh, for purposes of this, I'm just going to install Firefox ESR because I would think probably most Linux users probably use Firefox or a Firefox-based browser. So let's go ahead and install that just to make sure it installs correctly. And I think I'm done with this now, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then we have the Peppermint Hub, and this is for system changes and customizations. So what is the Peppermint Hub? So it opens a second window again. And okay, this is kind of like your control panel, right? Your uh, settings panel for like your desktop environment or whatever where you can make changes to networks and printers and uh, you can get your system info you can add users and groups we have software tools one of the software tools uh, obviously we're going to have the snap store and flat hub because we enabled snaps and flat packs app image hub is also here so if i click on that i'm assuming that would open in a web browser it does is this like a this is actually more like a web application right actually it looks like it's actually cute browser because i notice we have kind of like a vim kind of a almost like a vim or emacs kind of mode line at the bottom if i hit o for open yes yeah, so this is uh, the cute browser uh, opening app image hub that is interesting because i did not see cute browser under internet but we now have Firefox ESR under internet, but that is cool that they have links to the Snap Store, Flat Hub, and the App Image Hub as well. We also have a link to Synaptic, which is my favorite Debian based uh, uh, software center, if you will, because it's, you know, not too flashy and gaudy. It's rather nice and peppy uh, because it doesn't include all those screenshots and all the animations and everything it is just a very nice package manager it lists everything in the repositories if you want to search for a package you can search for a package with the search button here for example htop i don't know if htop is pre-installed or not it doesn't look like it because if htop was installed this would be checked here so i could mark htop for installation and then i could hit apply and it would install htop for me but i'm actually not going to install htop that way and the reason i'm not is i'm going to open a terminal since i know htop was not installed let's see if snaps actually work sudo snap install htop just to make sure that it did enable snaps for us we're also going to check make sure it enabled flat packs for us as well but it does look like it's working correctly so but let's go ahead and wait for the installation of htop to complete and then we'll run htop just to make sure and that completed let's go ahead and run htop it says command htop not found i do a snap list htop is there 
It says, warning, snap bin was not found in your path if you have not restarted your session. So I may have to restart this machine before we can actually get that. But before I restart the machine, let's also do a flat pack install of something. So let's flat pack install GIMP. I don't know if GIMP is installed or not. And it looks like, note that these directories are not in the search path as well. So you may have to reboot for Flatpak to work as well. Let's go ahead and do the reboot. That way we know uh, uh, snap packs and flat packs are working. It says reboot command not found. Well, that is interesting that they don't have that alias, but we'll go ahead and go into the menu system. And I'm going to choose the uh, log out button here and shut it down. And now that we've restarted the VM, let's see if HTOP installed as a snap now works. It does not. That is interesting. Wonder if it would appear in the menu system. It does not. Uh, let me up arrow and see if I can get Flatpak install GIMP to work. No remote. Well, maybe GIMP isn't there. Flatpak install Discord. Yeah. So even though they have the buttons to enable snaps and flat packs, uh, I, I'm sure, you know, I, I could get this working, but the fact that you have, you know, this here, I would think you wish, should just click the buttons, enter your sudo password, and everything should just work. The fact that it doesn't, I would consider that a bug. Also, in the welcome application, you have a Peppermint online documentation, which I'm assuming would just open up the cute browser once again, which is kind of weird that cute browser is not in the menu system at all. Now again, they could just be treating this as standalone web applications and not necessarily a browser itself, but it's definitely a cute browser. But I am glad that they include the documentation here. So I'm going to close that out. And then we have the build log, review the build log. I'm not going to do that. And the Peppermint community, so we have links to, uh, I'm not sure what that icon is. Is that that SourceForge icon? I could be wrong about that. That's Mastodon. I don't know what any of this other stuff is, but let's go ahead and close out the welcome application. Let's go ahead and navigate through the menu system and see what is installed out of the box. So under accessories, we have our application finder. We have the bulk rename tool, the clipboard manager, disk. Now, is that GNOME disk? I believe it is. If I go to about disk, yeah, disk. Uh, 43.0, so yeah, part of the GNOME suite of applications. So most of these applications, of course, are going to be XFCE applications, but this obviously is a GNOME application. We have the menu editor, so this is to edit the menu, obviously, right? So this is an XFCE tool for you to be able to edit this menu. We have our screenshot application, our task manager. We have the file manager, which is Thunar, the default file manager for the XFCE desktop environment. Now, one thing I notice is it doesn't show hidden files. If I view, I click on show hidden files. Yeah, because yeah, I hate that file managers by default hide the hidden files. I know they're called hidden files, but really, you know, <laughs> they really shouldn't be hidden. Like I get, uh, I, I get the original concept, but these days I think most Linux users, once you're past the brand new user stage, you're going to be using a lot of these dot files, these config files. You're going to be editing them and playing with them. Um, if I ever create my own Linux distribution, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to enable show hidden files in my file manager. That's one of the things I'm going to do. Also under accessories, we have XArchiver, which is the archive manager for zip, unzip, things like that. LightDM, the greeter settings. So this is to be able to edit your LightDM login greeter, the appearance, you know, the wallpaper and things like that, the look and feel of the login manager. Also under accessories, we have Mousepad, which is the default plain text editor for the XFCE desktop environment. This is Mousepad 0.5.10, a very simple plain text editor, honestly. Uh, if I was installing a plain text editor, I'd probably want something better than Mousepad. Even GNOME's gedit is much better than Mousepad. I'd probably go with something like Genie, though. Genie, fantastic plain text editor. We also have the Orage Global Time. I'm not exactly sure uh, how to pronounce that, but this is for clocks, time and date and things. Uh, I've never actually played with the program, even though it is installed on a lot of XFCE distributions. We have Plank for a dock. That's interesting. I did not know they would use a dock. The dock is at the bottom. We should probably move it. 
Uh, either move the dock to the top or leave the dock at the bottom and move the panel to the top. I wonder if I right click on the panel, move the panel, see if I can actually do that. No, that would have removed the widget, which is the taskbar. How do I move the panel? It's been so long since I've actually uh, done anything here with XFCE panel preferences, maybe. Have display, horizontal, vertical, lock panel. Maybe we need to unlock the panel. There we go. And now I can move it to the top. Yay, I figured that out. Now lock the panel back. We could leave the dock down here, but let's close the dock. Uh, would Control-Alt-T bring up a terminal? I'm gonna run at X kill. And then I'm gonna click on the dock to kill the dock. And let's go back into accessories and restart plank and now it'll be flush to the bottom because before it wasn't flush to the bottom because it had to respect that the other panel the xfce panel was already at the bottom so yeah i'm just going to leave that running also under accessories we have vim it's very nice that they install vim out of the box although they don't install htop out of the box so it'd be nice if they did that as well under graphics, we don't have much here. Document scanner for scanning um, image magic, which image magic is a dependency for a lot of other graphical applications. And under internet, we have Firefox ESR, which is the browser we chose to install, and Kumo, which is the simple SSB launcher. SSB stands for Site Specific Browser. Think of it as a web application designed to look at a specific website. So. You guys have seen these web applications that are designed for, for example, for Wikipedia, because I've shown some of those on camera before. It's a web application that all it does is search Wikipedia and browse Wikipedia, that particular URL. And then we could create something like that here. So give this SSB a name. Maybe we only want to search my website, which is uh, distro.tube. So let's do distro.tube. Enter the URL, https colon slash slash distro.tube. And now that I've created that, we can select a SSB to manage. There's distro.tube. If I hit run, it's going to launch this site specific browser. Yeah, again, using looks like cute browser, right? <laughs> so I could manage my website. And, you know, this is just to view my website here, right? So uh, if I hit open, O on the keyboard to open here inside cute browser, would it actually navigate? To another side if I wanted to. Yes, yeah, so it's not like you're locked into just browsing that site. If you know how Cute Browser works, you can navigate to other sites as well. But that is a pretty neat program. So this is Peppermint's uh, Kumo program for these SSB type applications. Back to the menu system that is now at the top of the screen here. Uh, under multimedia, we have pulse audio, volume control, and nothing else. So we do need a media player. Remember in the welcome application, it did ask us, did we want to install Parole, which is a, a video player. We chose not to, but we will eventually probably need to install something to play uh, music and to play videos. For me, I'd probably just install something like VLC, which works both for music and video. Uh, under Office, we don't have anything here, but again, if you need an Office suite, of course, you can find LibreOffice in the repos. And then Settings is your standard XFCE settings stuff. Really nothing to see here, nothing that's out of the ordinary under System. This is some of your system configuration stuff, including the GDB package installer. So that is to install Debian packages, .deb packages that are not in your repo. Maybe you find them online and you need to find a way to load these things. GDB is how you get those things to install. We also have Gparted here, which uh, Gparted, I understand why Gparted should be on the ISO as far as part of the live environment. I would suggest probably removing Gparted after the distribution is installed. Rarely should anybody be playing with a partition editor once they've actually installed the operating system because you, you could run the risk of a new user trying to play with that thing and seriously damaging their machine. Now, now, now let me do a control alt T to bring up the terminal once again. I'll zoom in and let me do a sudo apt install htop. That's, uh, it didn't look like snaps and flat packs were working. How uh, install htop using the native Debian package, right? So now htop, we're using XFCE, which is a pretty slim desktop environment. You can see we're only using 650 megs of the six gigs of RAM I gave this VM. And that's after 
I've played around a lot here, right? I've opened a lot of programs. There's actually quite a few things running in the system tray, and that's still really light on RAM, 650 megs. So that is the beauty of XFCE, very light on resources. Let me make this full screen. I'll clear the terminal. Let's do a uname dash R. We're gonna use 6.1 for the kernel. That's the latest LTS kernel, of course, being based on Debian, that's what kernel the the Debian 12 release was using as well let me do a apt list dash dash installed to get a list of everything that was installed as a Debian package via the apt package manager now now that I've got that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up arrow I'm gonna pipe all of this output into WC dash L WC is the word count program dash L means give me a line count rather than a word count what it's going to do is there was 1,509 lines in this output from the apt list installed output. That means there's 1,509 packages installed via the apt package manager. Some other things I might want to check. Let's do a where is is pipe wire here. Pipe wire is not installed, so we're strictly using Pulse Audio. Obviously, Wayland is not here. XFCE does not have a Wayland component at all right it has to run on x11 so this is strictly xorg and one final thing i want to do is i want to right click on the desktop and let's go into desktop settings and go check out the wallpapers the backgrounds it looks like they only have four here but these are very nice wallpapers a couple of these i have seen before but they are very nice photographs yeah i really like that one yeah very nice got the trees blooming there and the mountain in the background honestly I think the best of the bunch was the one they went with as the default wallpaper so I think I'll just leave that as it is so that is the latest release of peppermint OS this was released on July 1st 2023 again peppermint OS now based on Debian 12 they also do a version based on DevOne, but they have not released a new version based on DevOne just yet that will be coming later in the year now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James Maxima, Homies Too Bald, Matt Mimmit, Mitchell Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato Chuck, Commander Angry, George Lee, Marstrom, Methos, Nate, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, Fedora, Polydate, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland Tools, Devler, Williams, and a bit, these guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Peppermint OS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these were all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.